Welcome to Warhammer 40k Lore in the Bible, where I pull from Warhammer 40k Lore to help explain biblical lore. And today we're going to be going over the Chaos Demons. But before we get into that, um, take the wikis with a grain of salt. I also do a regular biblical video on Mondays, and the rest is Warhammer 40k content. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. Chaos Demons, or simply, Demons also known as Neverborn, amongst the forces of chaos, are intelligent and usually malevolent entities of the warp, comprised of um, purely psychic energy. Demons are both sentient and self-aware embodiments of chaos, and collectively the greatest servants of the chaos gods, and of chaos itself as a universal force. Excuse me. Demons are created at the whim of one of the four major chaos gods from a faction of the gods own power a fraction of the gods own power within the immaterium and act as an extension of its will a demon's appearance and intrinsic character reflect the gods own nature these demons may be reabsorbed into the gods psychic signature in the warp at their whim yikes the chaos gods are not alone in warp space. They have created servants from their own essences. The creatures that mortals have named demons based on their ancient legends and religious mythologies who are not so closely bound to the warp. Demons are entities of, or of a somewhat or different nature to their masters and are the most numerous of the creatures to be found in the Empyrean. A demon is born when a chaos god expends a portion of its own power to create a separate being. This psychic power binds a collection of senses, thoughts, and purposes together, creating a separate but closely related personality and consciousness that can move within the warp. The chaos gods can reclaim the independence it has given to its demon or children at any time, thus ensuring their loyalty. It is only though, or though the loss of this power that a demon can truly be destroyed, its mind dissolving into the worlds and currents of warp space. Some worshippers of chaos believe that the souls of mortals who most fervently worship the ruinous powers in life are transformed into lesser demons upon their death and entry of their soul into their patron god's domain in the realm of chaos. For instance, this belief is held especially for the blood letters of Korn, who Cornates believe were once the blood god's greatest mortal warriors, and the plague bearers of Nurgle, who some hold are the souls of those mortals who have been afflicted with Nurgle's rot. As, a minion, or as minions of the chaos gods, most demons lack self-will, at least as humanity understands it. Instead, they serve only to spread the aims of their masters. For example, a demon of corn seeks only battle and wages war upon other demons with the same fervor as it does upon mortals. Demons seemingly spend much of their existence in conflict with other demons, as each of the chaos gods seek to expand its power and influence as part of the great game. It is only when the mortal world is involved that the demons tend to band together and cooperate, and even then, such alliances are short-lived, as each of the four chaos powers seek to prevent the others from gaining any sort of advantage. Oops. Oh man, I lost my spot. There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Demons have no physical presence within the warp. The realm of chaos is an anathema to the laws of physics, and the starships that navigate its depths do so by taking a skin or a bubble of reality with them when they enter using their warp drive. Instead of possessing a true physical form, demons project a form conjured from raw psychic energy that is essentially a lesser interpretation of their master's fundamental nature. Hence, the bizarre and inhuman appearances projected by demons indicate their presence, status, and allegiance to a chaos god. Though it may be a 
or may appear to be made of normal matter when it materializes in real space, a demon's form is no more physical than it is it is in the realm of chaos. In fact, they are beings of pure warp energy, given shape and depth. When manifested in the material universe, demons have particularly invulnerabilities and weaknesses, as well as many strange powers derived from their warp-born nature as psychic beings. Slaying a demon or demon's physical projection does not kill it, but only severs its presence in reality. Its true essence in the warp remains unharmed. As creatures of pure emotion and psychic energy that are native to the twisted mirror dimension of the Empyrean, demons cannot survive for long in the cold reality of the material universe. They need some manner of focal point, some channel through which they can transfer their uncanny power from the Immaterium and make themselves manifest in the worlds of flesh and blood. Over the span of the Empyrean, or Empyrean's history, the warp rifts that have led to a demonic assault have usually been the result of untrained psychers opening their minds to the baleful whispers of the warp. Such an intrusion starts with a demonic possession of the host, but can end with the psyker being turned body and soul into a hideous, shrieking gateway, a wound in reality that can allow hosts of demons to come pouring through. Such small-scale invasions usually peter out as the flow of chaos energy dries up, the demons fading away to nothing. The exceptions are when the chaos space marines and other servants of the ruinous powers, having much the same goals as the demons of their patron gods, summon the legions of the warp into real space. Oops. Through acts of voluntary possession, ritual sacrifice, psychic machination, and sustained blasphemy, they weaken and shred the veil that holds the horrors of the warp hidden from the worlds of mortals. All too often, when the Chaos Space Marines attack, hosts of blood letters, horrors, demonettes, and plague bears burst from the either to revel in the carnage. When a demon is killed in the material universe and is banished back to the warp, if not simply reabsorbed by its creator, it must remain there to regain its strength that it eventually might manifest itself again. Legend has it that a demon banished in this way cannot return for a thousand Terran years in a day. Though it is, of course, impossible to prove such a belief through study, and the concept of time itself is meaningless within the warp. The slight to a slain demon's pride is considerable. However, and the demon is forced to endure the mockery of its fellows until it can return to corporeal form and avenge itself. The most powerful demons will call upon any servants and tributary lesser demons to help them achieve their event or revenge. If it has any or many allies, it may also request their aid, though all demons are cautious in doing so. Such favors must inevitably be returned, and no demon welcomes the dominion of another creature, be it mortal or demonic. Yeah, okay. Do, 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 I just... okay. Across the stars, warp storms rage, and the galaxy stands in the precipice of a new age as the 41st millennium comes to a close. Prophets, and augurs proclaim the end times for mankind, and the number of instances of demonic possession across the Imperium man is rising. Each psyker so accursed is granted an epiphany. Um, in their last grasping death, the victims glimpse the horror doom that awaits them, an abyss of chaos, absolute in its finality, unending in its despair, now across the galaxy. That same vision of the ultimate torment of eternity beneath the lash of demons has spread across untold, untold star systems. Countless life forms read the portents and prepare the dark days ahead. Let's see here. Yeah. Premonitions of disaster 
are now rife amongst the Imperium of Man, by far the largest of the galaxy's interstellar empires. But few understand the true nature of the warp and the threat its denizens represent to all life. Yet, even distant, technologically backwards imperial planets have marked the telltale or telltale signs of impending apocalypse. The proliferation of mutants and rise of chaos cults who worship the dark gods and the ever increasing number of psychers in the human population. The Inquisition sees the warning signs. But there are simply too many Imperial planets in peril for them to halt many of the deadly chain reactions caused by demonic possession. As psychers implode, small tears in the fabric of reality usher in bloody rains of terror across thousands of planets. And in their attempt to suppress the truth and forestall mass panic, the Inquisitors adopt ever more ruthless methods. Okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end it there. All right, so we're on the biblical portion now, and we're going to be talking about who are the demons of the Bible and different kinds and the hierarchy of them. So, anyways, we're going to start with Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, so that the daughters of men, that they were fair. These sons of God are the angels, or in the book of Enoch, they're called the watchers, as you're going to see. Anyways, saw so the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Basically, he's saying, if you guys keep doing this, you're all going to be corrupted, and my spirit won't be in you anymore. Like, I did a video this week where it says, don't you know that you are the temple of God, right? Us, you know, Christians, you know, if you're a Christian and stuff. But anyways, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Basically, superheroes. So you got these entities who are not necessarily created from God, and they were created from the commingling of angels and women, human women. There's also, I, I want to get at some uh, misconceptions here, that fallen angels are not, the quote-unquote demons that, you know, we typically see, right? They are evil spirits in the sense of the word, but they are not the entities that we think of that are demons, okay? They have immortal bodies. Why would they want to possess a flesh bag, right? But anyways, also in the gaming world, okay, so these entities are called the Nephilim, which means fallen ones in Hebrew. And the biggest misconception in gaming is that they're angel-demon hybrids. No, the Nephilim are the demons, right? And it's different kinds of stuff, too. Animals were done, and you'll see in the book of Jasher, or I didn't bring it up here, but that it talks about how they went after the reptiles, animals, everything. They were trying to usurp God's creation, basically. Okay, wherefore have ye left the high, holy, eternal heaven, laying with women, and defiled your... I'm sorry, this is the first book of Enoch, chapter 15. And defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taking yourselves wives, and done like the children of men, and begotten giants, as your sons. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, see, right there, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. And have forgotten children, or have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also do who die and perish. Therefore I have given them wives also, that they might impregnate them and beget children by them. Thus nothing might be wanting on them on the earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life. 
and immortal for all the generations of the world. Therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as the spiritual ones of heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants, who are produced from the spirits of flesh, okay, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men, and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. And um, they shall be evil spirits on the earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. So the Nephilim are the demons. And it's an umbre Nephilim is an umbrella term meaning for all these weird entities, basically. Yeah. Acts 19.12 So that from his body were brought unto the sick, or unto the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out from the or out of them. So now these evil spirits or these demons are making this person sick. Are these little nurgling type demons, right? Interesting. Second Kings one two, and Ahaziah fell down um, through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. <sighs> Stupid thing. So, Beelzebub is the plague god. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? All right. Also, king of the demons, he's also known as. Isaiah 34, 15. There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay and hatch, and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered. These vultures are demons as well. And then we also have, okay, the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr, there's another one, shall cry to his fellow. And we also have dragons as well. So, interesting. Luke eleven twenty six. Then goeth he and taketh him to seven other spirits more. Or you know what? I should read this. This is basically about getting a demon out, but he comes back tenfold with stronger ones. But anyways, this is just how they act. Um, he is that or that is not with me is against me, and he that gathered not with me is scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out, that person that he just came out of. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished, so it was cleaned, right? Probably became a Christian or whatever, but this guy didn't keep cleaning his house, right? It was a... Uh, one and done, seems like, type of thing, right? Um, yeah, okay. Then goeth he, taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. This is why I was saying, if you get, you know, a demon out, and that person isn't necessarily willing to be a Christian, you might as well keep that thing in there because it will come back with more, right? So you got to make sure people are serious about it. But anyways, Ezekiel 35, 6. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. That's interesting. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. That's interesting. Is this a blood demon? But, it, or, you know, and uh, something like corn type of thing, right? Because this, um, this right here. Do, do, do. 
he, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and the blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Interesting. Alright, so now we're going to see the hierarchy. So, Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These will be your fallen angels. Against powers. Against the rules of darkness of this world. These would be like your greater demons, your demon princes, like in Warhammer 40k and stuff like that. And against spiritual wickedness and high places. Okay, so there's this hierarchy that's in there. All right, now we're going to get back to warmer 40k lore. So, a demon prince is a human champion of chaos who has been elevated to demonhood as a reward for their actions on behalf of one of the major chaos gods or by the will of chaos undivided. Demon princes have chosen to trade their humanity for the godlike power and immortality of a creature of the warp though at the cost of their free will. A demon prince is, is a living extension of the force of chaos. To ascend to the rank of demon prince is the ultimate goal of the most powerful champions of chaos, as it gives them immortality and power beyond the reckoning of mortals. For the devotees of the ruinous powers, this is far from an impossible goal. These who climb the path of champion to its apex or granted the prize of eternal life. Though thousands of lesser aspirant, or aspirants will fall by the wayside, a supremely talented devotee will clamor over mountains of the slain until they reach the pinnacle of their bloody craft. Over the course of the Terran centuries, such champions offer up sacrifices on a planetary scale, risking death and mutation in the hope of attracting the gaze of the dark gods. And yet, murder alone is not enough. Alright, so we're going to move on. Exalted demons. Certain demons can... Now, these are regular demons here. These aren't humans or anything, as far as I know. Certain demons can serve their patron chaos god so well that they are granted special favor in their god's eyes. These demons, who can be of... Either lesser demon and greater demon status are often more powerful and granted greater abilities than their counterparts of the same type. So, for instance, an exalted greater demon often commands authority over even other greater demons when serving in their gods' demonic legions and likewise for their lesser brethren. And then, of course, you got the demonic legions, but we're going to end it there. I want to thank you guys for watching and thank you for the support you guys have been giving me. The channel's growing and I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. It's all because of you, right? But, anyways, thank you guys for watching and you guys have a wonderful day.